Yeah, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Now, this is one of those topics that I was prevented from discussing due to the fact that I was on federal probation. But now that that's in my rearview mirror, we can go ahead and talk about this one right here. What does it feel like to rob a bank? From personal experience, I could speak on this and tell you just exactly how it feels. Because I did it. it. Takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a special kind of somebody in the game to actually walk up into a bank which is full of all kinds of unknowns. You don't know who's in there. You don't know if there's an armed security guard. You don't know if there's an off-duty police officer in line cashing a check or opening up a bank account. You have no idea. There's so many unknown variables that are going on in this bank. And all the planning, all the preparation, you could stake the place out for months. You could do all of that stuff. And still, those unknowns outweigh any of the positives or the pros of getting away clean. Now, most people do get away clean. It's the aftermath that gets them busted. Very rarely does somebody actually get caught in the commission of a bank robbery. But if you're going up in there like Yosemite Sam, guns blazing, or drawing down and having everybody get face down onto the ground, you are more likely to get caught. You actually increase the odds of you getting caught tenfold. But what about the guy or the gal that just simply goes in there with a note? These are the most common robberies because anybody who's anyone knows, why would you want to go in there with a gun and run the risk of getting caught? It's what's called that immediate gratification. So if you go in there strapped up, body armored, all that stuff, and I've met a few in the feds that have done that, you're going to get away with hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're lucky. If you can get them to open the safe, if you can get all the drawers pulled open, if you can get access to the inside ATM, of which, from what I understand, is not possible anymore these days. It's a separate key. It's a separate person that has access to that. If all those factors are in play, then yeah, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of dollars. But guess what? They're never going to stop coming after you. They're going to be looking for you and looking for you and looking for you. And it's going to be a national thing right there. It's going to go all the way to Quantico. Anytime it's an armed bank robbery. But the one with the note is much more common. And what simply happens with that right there is they'll investigate it for about two, three days. And then that's it. They'll just write it off to the FDIC insurance and they'll get their money back, however much money was taken. You'd be surprised the kind of people that actually go in there and rob a bank with the note. I've heard about all of them. I've seen many of them. Older, younger, even very young. One guy was so sick from heroin, he sent his 10-year-old child in there who was barely even tall enough to reach up to the counter to hand him a note. Somebody went in and robbed a bank on rollerblades one day. An old man with an oxygen tank said he was going to blow the whole place up with the oxygen tank if he didn't get the money. This happened in San Diego. They gave him the money and he walked away. He didn't even have a car. He walked about two or three blocks down the road and ran out of air and passed out on the side of the street. Another guy I heard of robbed a bank, came running out of there to get on the bus, and the bus just so happened to fly by, so he had to sit at the bus stop and wait. And he said he sat there and he sat there and he sat there. Finally, the next bus came while they were doing everything, interviewing people, going in and out of there, cops all over the place. And he got away, but he got caught for another bank robbery later. The case of mine, what I did and how I did mine, wasn't exactly planned at the moment. It was kind of a spur of the moment thing. So in order to understand this, I got to go back a few days to explain to you exactly everything that was going on. How I ended up in Texas, since I'm a California native, born and raised in California, been there my whole life, all the way up till I was 38 years old, or 37 actually. So I get out of Chino, Palm Hall in 2012, completely maxed out my parole, discharged my number from the gate, 
was dropped on the streets with nothing and nowhere to go. So what did I do? I had no intentions or plans on ever doing good. I was like, fuck the world. You know what I mean? I was in a real bad place mentally. So I hooked up with all kinds of different people, all the wrong people. Ended up running around with this chick who was like from the Laguna Niguel area. You know, fine ass little white girl, rich white girl that was into heroin. I did a shot with her. Ended up ODing, almost died. The news hit Facebook that I did die. My mom freaked out. My sisters were freaking out when it came out that it was fake news that I was still alive. My whole family said, you are done out there in California. You need to get out of there. You are off parole. You're free. But I was still on county probation in Orange County, and I was supposed to complete a drug program as what was my, uh, what was it called? Uh, kind of like suspended sentence, I guess you could say. Instead of going to the county jail, I was supposed to go to a drug program. Well, I never completed that, so I ended up having a probation violation warrant in Orange County, but it was only like misdemeanor county probation. wasn't felony probation, so the warrant was only statewide. So I go all the way out there to Texas. I'm driving around. I get pulled over. Nothing. But see, I wasn't entirely free. Like I said, the last time I was completely free was in 1993. So I ended up going out there to Texas. First, I went to Dallas, couldn't get, couldn't get a job, couldn't find any work nowhere. So I moved out to Amarillo where my older sister was. And it just so happens that my older sister and her husband were TDC correctional officers at the time. They worked at the Neal unit in Texas, right? I couldn't stand living with them. So I moved into a cheap motel off of the highway next to a strip club. And I was working at a car wash. I tried doing the HVAC thing through the same guy who gave me the job at his detail shop, but just me and HVAC just didn't mix. I just didn't really, couldn't do it, man. I didn't like crawling around up in attics, crawling up under houses, doing all that kind of shit. It just didn't, just wasn't for me. So I go back to the detail shop. One night I'm running around with a bunch of cats that are Wessels, right? We're at the strip club, snoring cocaine, ended up doing a line of meth, go back to my cheap motel look in the mirror, realize I'm 38 years old, living in a cheap motel, working at a fucking car wash, man. I got depressed. I went on a sick one. Had a dude that was from Cali, one of my one of my peeps that came out there to try to get on his feet, but ended up doing all the wrong things. Ended up losing somebody who was somebody in the Texas criminal world's dope. Being the good Samaritan that I am, I said that I was going to pay it back because I had planned on doing a lick. Somewhere out of state, somewhere out back towards Cali. I was going to come up on several grand. Told him I'll pay you back. Put myself in the middle of that shit. And it didn't fall through. That, that little mission that I was going to go on didn't fall through. So all kinds of bad shit was happening. My family was being threatened. They ended up fucking kidnapping my baby pit bull and chopping its head off, doing all kinds of shit. So initially, I was on my way to Arkansas to pick something up, to do something, right? To get something to deal with this situation. If you could read between the lines, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I decided to stop off in the city of Pampa, Pampa, Texas. And there's some chick there that I was messing with. We were fucking around, messing around. I shot a shot of heroin in the bathroom, in her bathroom. I left my gun, my strap, I left my strap, my wallet, and my phone sitting on a hamper in this bathroom when her boyfriend showed up and it was a commotion. Me and him start throwing blows. He's leaking all over the place. I caught him just right. Somebody threatened to call the cops. I get into my car and I take off. You know what I'm saying? Left my wallet, my strap, my phone, everything behind. I didn't realize that this was the case until I passed through the state of Oklahoma. First time I've ever been in Oklahoma in my life. So I'm driving through Oklahoma and I'm going past a, a city called Elk City. Decide to get off and get some gas because it's about a quarter of a tank, just under a quarter of a tank left. Realize I didn't have my wallet, didn't have anything. I'm ripping my car apart trying to find it. And then it dawned on me at that moment, I left it all the way back in Pampa. So I had two choices. Either I could keep on driving, which was a stupid choice, or I could drive back to Pampa and I'll probably make it. I might make it. I don't know, it's about equal distance from like, let's say, I think midway between Oklahoma City and Tulsa as opposed to Elk City to Pampa, Texas. 
So either way, I was screwed. I decided to just keep going through Oklahoma thinking that I can call my contact in uh, Arkansas and they can meet me halfway or they can meet me wherever it is that I'm at. I'm not realizing how big the state of Oklahoma is. It looks like it's little, but it's not. It's a pretty long state. And it takes several hours to drive all the way through it. So I'm going, I'm going. Finally, I get about to El Reno. I'm out of gas. My gas light is on. Somebody let me use their phone. I called my peeps, told them what was going on. They said, well, can you go as far as Tulsa? I'll meet you there. And I'm like, how far is Tulsa from here? This person said, man, hours, miles. I said, there ain't no way. I don't even think I can make it to, to Yukon or OKC. I said, well, you're on your own, man. You're resourceful. Figure it out. So the first thing that I figured out of doing was panhandling. And I've never panhandled before. I don't like the idea of panhandling. I don't like it when I'm surrounded by them at the fucking 7-Eleven or anywhere else out there. But I had to panhandle, right? Hit up this one dude. I'm like, excuse me, sir. Do you have a couple bucks? No. Excuse me, man. Do you have a couple? No. Fuck this shit, man. I'm a G. I'm not a panhandler. So what am I going to do at this point in time? Thought came to my head. I already was going to plan on robbing banks. Figured out the whole system, the whole get down, all the procedures and everything. So I was going to start hitting banks. That was the plan. Quick, easy cash. Few thousand dollars a pop. And if you keep doing them, I mean... They're going to let you walk out of there. They're not going to hit the button unless they see a gun or they think you've got a gun. And most of the time, nobody's even paying attention to what's going on. So I knew, knew the whole get down. I talked to this chick one time that I knew that explained the whole fucking get up. What a lot of people fail to understand about robbing a bank. And I've heard people say, well, you don't get that much money. They'll only give you a couple hundred bucks. That's not true. Yes, some people have gotten away with a couple hundred bucks. That's because the mistake they make is when they go in there with a note, says, give me the money. Okay, now you got to understand that according to the procedures and how the federal law and everything sets it up for the conduct of a bank teller to initiate what uh, protocols to initiate during a robbery is you have to stay calm. You have to meet the demands. You have to listen to everything that the robber says. Also paying attention to all, every, every and all, all meticulous details about the robber himself. How tall is he? How old do you think he is? What does his hair look like? Does he have a lazy eye? Does he have, does he have slant eyes? Does he have, does he have big wide eyes, little eyes? Is he fat? Is he skinny? All these things. Does he have hairy arms? All these things. Tattoos? All that shit. But they have to meet the demand. So they have to meet the demand to the letter. So when somebody says, give me the money, it's pretty ambiguous. They'll just give you a whole bunch of ones, fives, tens, and twenties. You run out of there with a big old wad of cash, think you came up on thousands, you count it's $132, and that's it. It's like McDonald's ordering a Big Mac. They have to pay attention to your order. So if I go in there and tell them I want two rolls of pennies, a dime, and a nickel, they got to give me two rolls of pennies, a dime, and a nickel. My note said, give me all your 50s and 100s. No die packs, nothing stupid. Don't hit the button, anything like that. We're being watched. They didn't see a gun. I kept my hands above the table the whole time. I had a little pouch that was with me. Well, this is just after 5 o'clock or somewhere around 5 o'clock on a Friday night. Most banks are closed. But there was a Walmart across the street. Now, this is crazy. For somebody to walk into a crowded Walmart on a Friday night and rob a bank. Just not very common. Most people will hit the branches that are outside, you know, just the building and it's the bank. But to go into a Walmart takes, takes a special kind of courage. I stood in line. I had a little note with me. Go up to the teller. Hand her the note. Give me the 50s and 100s. She hesitated for a second. She's looking at me. I already know what she's doing. She's, she's logging in everything all everything that I'm doing. Where are my hands? What's going on? She's going through the procedures in her head. My adrenaline is flowing, but I'm calm at the same time. Because I got nothing to lose. Like I said, what do I got? 
don't have a fucking penny to my name, living in a cheap motel next to a strip club. I had nothing to lose. So it was all good. And I knew if I get busted, I'm not going to the Oklahoma state prison system, I'm not going to the Texas state prison, I'm going straight to the feds. No big deal, right? So my heart's racing, my adrenaline's going, I got butterflies in my stomach. How does it feel? It's a rush. But at the same time, you have to fucking maintain yourself and you have to stay calm. You can't look suspicious. A lot of people get themselves caught when they look suspicious. They're looking around, doing all that stuff like that. I'm paying attention to everything that's going on around me, but I'm like this. Finally, I tell her, come on, let's do this, lady. Come on, man. You know what I mean? Have you photographed my, my image in your head enough? Let's get this going. So she pulls out all the 50s and the 100s. I stuff them into the little pouch, nod my head to her, and I walk out the door. Just as I'm going out the door of the Walmart, the Walmart door greeter says, have a nice day. Get up into my car, take off down the road, turn right, going back towards the freeway. Damn, they're out of gas, stuck at a red light. I see, I see fucking... Police lights behind me. I can hear sirens. I don't know if it's for me or for somebody else. Nevertheless, I was getting ready to run that red light and get on that freeway until finally it turned green. I got back on I-40 and I was gone. Gone. I managed to get down the road and I was I knew it, man. I was driving hell slow. I'm like, I'm going to run out of gas. This is going to be one of those dumbest criminal moments. I just got to make it to the next off-ramp to a gas station and get some gas or I'm fucking doomed. Now I'm tripping. I'm like, I got away with everything. I had a dummy plate on my car, no plate on the front. In Texas, your registration is up on the windshield. I had that covered with black electrical tape. There was no, it was, it was no way they could bust me. Plus, I'm not even from Oklahoma. They're going to be running through all the local people that are in the state. They're not even going to be thinking about somebody from Texas and that whole license plate thing. They're not even going to trip on that either. So I finally made it and just barely coasted into a gas station and pumped some gas. And I was gone. I went back to Pampa, picked up my wallet, my strap, my phone and all that shit. Now I was on my way to Amarillo. Now here's the weird part. So I got all this cash. I know I'm home free. I'm in the state of Texas now. I know all about the different branches of FBI offices. So over in Oklahoma City at that branch office, they're all fucking up in arms. They're investigating. They get assigned a special agent to the case. But it's not even going to be on the local news in Amarillo, of which people were trying to say. People were trying to say, oh, no, they saw you on the news. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I got snitched on. All right. So I'm driving down that highway past like White Deer and other cities that are right there between Pampa and Amarillo. And I don't know, I blacked out. I blacked out and I woke up in an intersection and it sounded like my car door shut. <clears throat> but I don't remember picking anybody up. It was weird. I ended up going back to my motel room and there was a chick there that was with me. And she went into the bathroom. I lost sight of her, right? I'm looking on my laptop, local bank robberies in Oklahoma, September 28, 2012, all that shit. Bam, there's my bank robbery just popped up. And as I'm reading all the details, looking at the pictures, seeing what they have on me, seeing what I need to change, this chick looks over the shoulder and looks at me and says, is that you? Slam the laptop down. I said, look, check this out. Don't talk to nobody about this. Don't say it. She goes, damn, I don't think you had it in you. Didn't think you had an in. I didn't have it in me. You don't even really know me that well. So you don't know what I, what I have in me or not. I mean, shit, just a month ago, you thought I was a cop. All these motherfuckers thought I was an undercover cop. I was wreaking havoc in the, in the city of Amarillo for, for weeks and months. Knocking fools out, going fucking ape shit on these people because they were all just twacked out in their mind. And their reason for why they thought I was a cop, they said, well, he has all his teeth. He's too clean and he's too healthy looking to be a tweaker. Well, I'm not a tweaker. I think I've explained this to you people before. So this showed right there without a doubt, obviously I'm not a cop. So she's bragging to her friend 
while they're smoking meth in another room with that dude I told you about from Cali that got me caught up in that deep shit with the dope that he lost. Talking about I robbed a bank. This other chick didn't like me because I fucking two-pieced her boyfriend and knocked him out. So now she's like, when they show up a little later on that night, they're in my motel room. She's taking pictures of me, and I thought she's taking selfies, taking pictures of me. Took pictures of my car. Sent him to the FBI, turned me in. What's up, for the, what's up with the reward? Is what she asked. So I had no idea any of this shit was going on. I took a nap for a little while, woke up, was running my errands early in the morning on Saturday. Paid my car payment for the month. Went to Walmart, went to fucking the mall. Did all that shit. Got a hold of these people and told them where you want to meet up at. And they told me where they were going to be, where they'd meet up. And I told them I'll pay you. But I wasn't going to pay them. I was going to go back and get my fucking strap and just start fucking just murking them until they killed me. Get as many of them as I could. So they kept asking me, well, where are you going to be at? Where are you going to be at? Where are you going now? I said, I'm going back to my motel room. They said, all right. I show up at the motel room. I get surrounded by the FBI and the cops and the rest is history. Like I said, I was completely done. What are your thoughts and feelings when you're doing a bank robbery? It depends on who you are. Me? I didn't care if I lived or died. As a matter of fact, I didn't even have my strap on me. So I was going to use my phone, get out of the car and point it at the cops and have fucking execution by a cop right there in the streets. But whether I was hallucinating or I was seeing ghosts or a guardian angel, I saw this little girl that was sitting, standing in front of my car. Well, she was actually like, it looked like she was sitting on a bike. To this day, I fucking, it was, it was all blurry. I didn't have my glasses on. You know I wear glasses. So I didn't have my glasses on or nothing. I'm trying to tell her to go away, go away. Didn't want to see anybody innocent get hit because of my bullshit. But something came over me and told me to surrender. And normally I don't do that. You're going to have to catch me. I'm a runner. So I surrendered, threw the keys out the window, got on the ground, all that shit. They picked me up and I looked over and that girl was gone. Sitting in the car, FBI told me, you have the right to remain silent, you're under arrest, all that shit. I just said, no need to fucking do anything. I did the bank robbery. I did it. That's what you're here for, right? And they said, yes. The bank robbery in Oklahoma? They said, yes. Yeah, guilty. Did it. Now can we get out of here? Just, I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just looking forward to just doing my time and getting it over with. And that's that. You can just send me to the feds. So the newspaper and the news said I was looking at 20 years. And that's what they told me I was looking at. I knew a little bit about the sentencing guidelines. And people that were in there in the federal holding tank in the Amarillo County Jail. I mean, the Randall County Jail in Amarillo. We're telling me, yeah, you know what I mean? You're probably going to get about, depending on, on what uh, category you fall in. So I'm looking at a possible career offender. But luckily for me, a lot of the crimes that would have counted me as a career offender were all too old. 15 years or older, they don't use them against you. So I get extradited back to Oklahoma, go to Grady County Jail. I get one of the most conservative judges in the entire country, Judge David Russell. And that motherfucker gave me every last drop of my guidelines. As a matter of fact, I asked for the max. That's real deal Holyfield right there. I didn't beg for mercy of the courts. It was the first time that I talked about being sexually abused as a kid. First time ever. I told the judge about it. He was tripping out about it. This is right when Ariel Castro was getting busted. He even said that's a horrible thing that happened to you. But unfortunately, that's not an excuse for your conduct. Never said it was, Your Honor. What I'm telling you is I'm so fucked up in the head is if you drop me on the streets tomorrow, by tomorrow night, I'll be breaking the law again. You need to give me the max. I need at least five years or more to get my fucking head straight and to figure everything out and to work through all of this because I haven't been able to deal with this abuse, this pain that I've had in my head 
all these years. Somebody's going to get killed. Maybe me, maybe somebody else. Some shit's about to pop in the streets if I get back out there. I'm just going to go on a sick one until I'm dead because that's the mission for me to die. He obliged me with every fucking last drop of my guidelines. He even recommended that I go to a facility that, that offers some kind of extensive treatment. And I took advantage of all of that. But how does it feel to rob a bank? Well, for me, it was just another day at the office. It was business as usual. It was just me being me, totally caught up in self-destruction, self-destructive behavior, not giving a fuck about nothing or nobody, straight fucking G status, straight fucking loco to the brain, to the bitter end. But there's a lot of reasons why people rob banks. But it takes a special kind of somebody with balls and with heart to actually do it. Not everybody can. When these people tell me they're pushing weight, they sell dope, big deal. That's easy. Any dummy could push dope. Not everybody could pull the trigger and kill somebody. Not everybody can run up in a bank and rob it. Just what it is. But I talked to all kinds of people. People that were behind on their taxes. Robbed a bank. People that had fucking outrageous student loans. One guy robbed three banks just to pay for his son's treatment. His son was sick. That's a real story. Finally, when he paid it all off, when he got his son his treatment, he turned himself in. That old man, he was about ready to get kicked out of the retirement home that he was living in. The geezer bandit, who knows why he was doing it, but he got away with thousands, hundreds of thousands. Sometimes he had a gun, sometimes he didn't, but he did it quiet, silent, and mostly with a note. Little 10-year-old kid went up in there to support his father's heroin habits. Knew a couple of teenage girls, heard about them, they just did it for the kicks. A lot of reasons why people do it, and the feelings are all over the place. It's anything from fear, to panic, to complete calm. To adrenaline rush and all of that shit. One of the main reasons why the feds wouldn't let me talk about this with you. Was because they thought that I was going to like. Basically encourage you to do it. Or to promote bank robbery as, as, as if it's a lucrative alternative to working a job. All these things they told me. Plus they didn't want me talking about my case. But I ain't trying to tell you to go out there and do nothing. What I'm telling you is, is you might get caught. You'll probably get away with it. But if you tell anybody, I don't care if it's your brother, your mother, your wife. For some reason, people will turn you in. They see you, your head, as dollar signs. They know they're going to get a reward. If you ever do rob a bank, don't say nothing to nobody, period. Because they're going to tell on you. I don't care. It's your own mother. There's all kinds of people in there that their own family turned them in. I don't encourage it. But I'm telling you that this is what it feels like. It's crazy, man. It's a rush. But at the end of the day, when you get caught, you're going to be going to the feds. And you're going to be like me, sitting on probation for three plus years, being up under government control, totally powerless and helpless over anything and everything that could possibly go wrong. Anything. You already know what it is. You heard it right here. Risen break raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, not sugarcoated, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick of reality. And I'm out.